Welcome back. This is a summary of modern geologic processes, so part two, uh, to provide examples of some of the modern geologic processes in California. So, um, volcanic landscapes. That volcanic landscapes in California include the Cascade volcanoes, such as Mount Lassen, that erupted about 100 years ago. Most of these are in Northern California. And Northern California is an area that still experiences subduction. This is called the Juan de Fuca plate. It is subducting under the part, part of Northern California and the Pacific Northwest. And that subduction process still promotes active uh, volcanic activity in Northern California, including in Cascades. Uh, the two most prominent are Mount Lassen, shown here, and Mount Shasta. In the Modoc Plateau, there's still evidence of, the, of lava flows that occurred in the recent geologic past, and some of these look quite fresh. So the Modoc Plateau is an example of fairly recent lava flows in California. There's also evidence of, of relatively recent volcanic activity in the basin and range area. So this area around Mammoth Lake features such as the Long Valley Caldera. The caldera is an area that it explode with a, such an explosive volcano that it actually left behind a, a flat area. The lava flows are evident in the area of Devil's Post Pile in the eastern Sierra Nevada. There's also no examples of uh, small cinder cone volcanoes. As far as plate tectonics, the, um, the major tectonic feature in California is the San Andreas Fault, as we've discussed. So I just want to highlight a few areas of the San Andreas Fault. In the north here is Tamales Bay. And if you look at this here, you can kind of see that the piece on the left doesn't seem to fit with the piece on the right. And there's this gap here in this bay filling in between. And because this part of it is actually on the Pacific plate and moving to the north, whereas the rest of California is on the North American plate, which is relatively moving in the other direction. Some of the side effects of this movement of the San Andreas Fault is the movement of areas of the coastal California. In fact, there are areas of the coast that used to be underwater, but have been uplifted with the movement of the San Andreas Fault. And you can see these as marine terraces, these sort of flat areas along the coast that have been uplifted out of the ocean, like this one near Santa Cruz. The place where San Andreas Fault is most visible is a dry area a dry valley west of Bakersfield called the Carrizo Plain. The Carrizo Plain is a kind of an expansive grassland and desert, and you can actually see the, the fault line of the San Andreas Fault in the Carrizo Plain. So whenever you see photographs of the San, you know, of things showing the San Andreas Fault, this Carrizo Plain is a good place to show photographs because you can actually see it happening here. One side is on the Pacific Plate, one side is on the North American plate. This is an area called the Big Bend, and it's called that because the San Andreas Fault takes a turn here and then breaks up into other faults. And this is what is called a compression zone because it's being kind of actively smashed as, a San, as the San Andreas Fault or the Pacific plate moves northward. Uh, one side, on this side of the San Andreas Fault is a perpendicular fault called the Gar Garlock Fault. And the Garlock Fault separates the Sierra Nevada from the Mojave Desert. Now tectonism or the folding and faulting of rocks, one prominent uh, feature that is part of tectonism is the Sierra Nevada. The Sierra Nevada is a tilted fault block. Hopefully you saw the video about Yosemite, the formation of Yosemite, and the guy kind of took the bricks and he cut this thing and it kind of tilted to the side. What he was illustrating is a tilted fault block. Okay, let's talk about 
exogenic processes. So exogenic processes are those that wear down or denude the landscape. These include weathering, mass wasting, and erosion. And so some a couple of examples of weathering include physical weathering. And there's some good examples of physical weathering in the Sierra Nevada, including processes like unloading and exfoliation that we've discussed earlier. And this is what created rocks that are in a dome shape like this, like half dome. If you look here in the Sierra Nevada, these rocks are peeling away like the layers of an onion because they've been, the pressure above them has been removed and that causes them to expand. And as the layers slough off, they leave behind a dome that's called exfoliation. One example of chemical weathering are the creation of various caverns in limestone. Um, and these are in various places along the mountainous regions of California where you have remnant pieces of limestone. And the chemical process is called carbonation. This is where acidic water will dissolve limestone, which limestone is, is a type of rock that's created on the seafloor. And it's made of the skeletons of sea creatures. And when exposed to acidic water, it dissolves and leaves behind an open cavern. These are also called karst processes. Mass wasting is the movement of material by gravity. We talked about slow processes such as soil creep, which happens anywhere that there's a, a hillside. But there's also a very rapid processes such as rock falls. And the Sierra, the Sierra Nevada, including Yosemite Valley, is a real hot spot for rock falls. And one reason is that it's also related to the physical weathering, because as this rock is exposed and breaks into these sheets, it's much easier for it to break away and fall by gravity. Landslides are prominent in the coast ranges. The coast ranges are made up of melange, a material that gets crumpled very easily, especially as it's compressed along the San Andreas Fault. And so the rocks of the, of the coast ranges are much more susceptible to landslides. This figure shows landslide susceptibility with the high, highly susceptible areas in red along the coast. This is a recent landslide along Big Sur in the southern coast range. And this is another example here of a, what we call a slope failure, where the material isn't held up by the slope and it comes down. In some cases, these are made worse by people um, building roads underneath slopes or building um, houses that are put too much weight on the slope. Now, when it comes to the exogenic or external processes, nothing has shaped California more than stream erosion. Stream erosion is the removal, movement, and deposition of material by running water. And just for an example, the Sierra Nevada and other mountain ranges are being shaped by erosion or degradation, where the material is actively being removed by water from the mountains. The material is then deposited into valleys such as the Great Central Valley. That process is called deposition or aggradation. So while the Sierra Nevadas are slowly being eroded away, the material is being deposited down in the Central Valley. So the Central Valley is a big bowl of what's called alluvium. In the Sierra Nevada, we have more erosion and degradation, and the streams are physically different. They take on a, a V-shaped river gorge um, during this process, and the streams are very rapid and cutting downward during this process. In the Central Valley, at the bottom, we have meandering streams, and as they move across the flatter Central Valley, the streams meander back and forth and erode side to side, and they help to spread the material that they bring all across the valley, deposit it. The Mojave, Colorado, and Basin and Range areas are dry, transmontane environments, and these are where you find that more desert or arid land processes and landforms such as processes such as wind erosion and deposition that create things like sand dunes, but also features such as alluvial fans, 
bajadas, which are collections of alluvial fans, and playas, which are areas that are ephemeral lakes at the bottom of deserts. There's probably no better example of glacial erosion than places in the Sierra Nevada, such as Yosemite Valley, and even places like Kings Canyon National Park. These are places that where during the Pleistocene or ice ages, glaciers have moved through and reshaped them from a V-shaped valley to a U-shaped valley. 